Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Christian Channel. My name is Claire McCallan, and today we'll be talking about the new movie starring Dennis Quaid, The Hill, the story of Ricky Hill, who overcame adversity to find a whole lot of success in baseball. Today, we're joined by Ricky Hill and director Jeff Celentano. Welcome, guys. How are you? We're good, and you get an award for speaking my name correctly. Oh, thank you. I practiced a couple times. <laughs> I have it written out. I think it'll make you laugh. My notebook, I got this the other day. It says, Ledger of Perceived Slights. Oh, so it keeps people on nice, their toes. <laughs> nice. I like it. But that's not it. It's my cheat sheet. So it's I so like great it. to have you guys here today. Jeff, I want to start with a question for you. How did you decide to get on board with this project? How? What was the uh, catalyst to begin all of this? Well, um, the the quick the quick part of this is that my brother randomly was in a hotel lobby, um, overheard Ricky on the phone talking about how upset he was not finding a director for his movie. <laughs> um, decided to tell Ricky he was eavesdropping his entire conversation, and he had the right guy. And Ricky said, "This is the last guy in the world that's going to have a director for me." He's sitting next to me in a lobby of a hotel, <laughs> listening to my phone call. And um, he called me that night and said, you're going to meet this guy tomorrow. I'm going to send you the script. I said, well, send me the script first, you know. So I read the script. And um, honestly, it's such an easy question to answer. I, I fell in love with the script so heavily that it got inside my soul and I couldn't get rid of it. I never stopped. Um, once I read it, I just was on board. And it took years and years of development and trying to get it made and trying to get it financed. And it was a struggle and an uphill battle. I, was, I felt like sometimes I was pushing a snowball up a mountain. Mm -hmm. But, but um, I just, it, 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 there wasn't any question if it was ever going to get made or I was going to do it. I mean, people said, it's never going to get made, Jeff. Leave it alone. It's 14 years. I said, it's going to get made. It just hasn't met the right group of people. And it's in God's hands and God's guiding this movie. If you don't believe in that, then you know that you're going to quit. But I'm not going to quit because... This everybody that kept coming in contact with us and then would fall apart. We would find stuff about them later that we were like, wow, we're so glad we didn't get in business with those people. And it kept getting crazier and crazier. And then all of a sudden out of the woodwork, the angel came. And the angel named Ron Cundy was this investor who fell in love with the movie and just went for it. He just <laughs> he just said, I'm going to fund the whole picture um, out of nowhere. And he, and he funded it from the moment he said, I'm going to send the money to the moment it came was 10 minutes. I mean, it was the whole budget. And then he, then he never ever did anything. He and Michael Hollinsworth and Matthew Dwyer, who were the three people that, you know, came to the table, they never came and bothered me ever. They said, you make the movie you want. We know nothing about filmmaking. They never questioned anything I did. I got to make the movie I wanted with my partner, Warren Ostergaard. And he and I made this movie together with our bare hands. I mean, it was just us. Well, of course, we had an amazing crew that we would never have been able to make this movie without. But what I'm saying is it was just two guys. Even today, I get calls from like certain actors saying, oh, I want to talk to you about this thing and, um, you know, my contract or I want to ask you about this. And I'll say, we're just two guys. We're not there's no production company on this. There's no. There's no huge company with like 50 employees. We're not in a studio. It's just Warren and me. Because when they call and say, oh, we were calling about this issue, you know, I'll say, well, I'll deal with that. But it's just us. There's no, you know, we have an accountant and a lawyer. That's it. You know. Isn't that just like God, though? That is the most gospel story explanation of something <laughs> that he has ordained happening. Like, that's exactly how it moves in the impossible and miraculous. And in Oh, yeah. The humble. That's incredible. So, Ricky, when you're sitting there in this lobby and this guy leans over and he's like, I I've got your guy. What was your reaction? Well, after going through 41 people brought before it. Um, I would just say that it was just another. Mm -hmm. Just another player, you know, in the game. And. Uh, uh, and then I did I did check him out. Uh, after he gave me his name and everything, I checked him out. And uh, then I had a, a man from one of my favorite movies called The Abyss, which came out years ago, tell me he knew who he was. And he said that uh, he's probably, probably right out of all the people that you have looked at, 
and talk to, he goes, I'm not your man to be involved in this, but this man probably is. And then the next day he proved himself. Uh, he showed up and I met him and um, we took it from there. Um, he came and brought more element to to the show than I expected. And uh, uh, the next thing you know, he takes me to his house and uh, puts it on screen and of what he's going to do and how he's going to direct this film and how he's going to make it look. And uh, he took all these beautiful movies and... Um, it, I got scenes out of the movies and kind of told the story of the hill in the look and style and music and everything, for real. Yeah, about what he was going to do with it. And uh, he kind of stole my heart right then. And then uh, I called back to Dallas to one of my execs and I told him about it. And I said, I think so far, I think I said, I'm pretty sure I found the guy. And um, after going through so many people, we had already, see, we had already, we kind of started this film all over. We started going with it, wrong crew. Or just a mess, and then go back, and I'm my uh, my uh, executive producer asked me. He said, "Rick, well, go out there and find who you want. Who do who do you want?" I said, "Well, I'll go out there. I'll go out there to L.A. and find who I want. Then I'll find it. I'll search for it." And um, I said, "God will lead me. God will lead the right direction." Uh, I wish he would have cut it off at 21. That way I could have stopped it at 21 instead of 41. Uh, but saying that, uh, I met Jeff. Connection was right. Um, the, um, the I'll, like I was telling earlier, about I always watch how someone's walking up to me. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to meet them. And I'm watching every move they make. I do. Because I, I almost... I almost can pick you apart right off before when you're walking up. And uh, everything fit right in. He took me to his house, entertained me with uh, what he was planned on doing with the movie, which no one did at all. And uh, he put this thing like in, uh, like I was watching my movie right then, but yet it wasn't even my movie. And, uh, Immediately, I fell in love with him and then prayed over it. Didn't take long for an answer with the prayer. I mean, the Holy Ghost stepped right in and let me know, this is your man. And I and, and over the years, everyone tried to steal this movie away from him, from him. And, uh, and I never would waver because I gave him my word that I would not the studios we had studios that wanted to film but the first thing they were going to do would get rid of him and so therefore I would not do it because I stuck to my word because if I'm gonna lie about something this movie's gonna be a uh, gonna be a fallen feature if I'm gonna lie about it so saying that I um um stuck with Jeff full time and here it is. He came he came flying through just like the Apostle of Paul. You know? Ricky, you talk about finding a director the same way I talk about finding a husband. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> and I waited and there were players, and I said, No, that one's not from God. <laughs> we use a lot of the same rhetoric. That's well, I, I use that same <laughs> rhetoric today. So um um, yeah, <laughs> I it's got beautiful. You. Honestly, it's an opportunity, I think, for our viewers at home to uh, experience some conviction. Maybe they're not making a film, right? But to learn right. from your example of waiting yeah. till it is ordained by God and whatever it is that they're waiting for. That's really beautiful. Yeah, you know, you know what? And you have to wait. Mm -hmm. Because if it's not, if it's I, like I've tried to explain to even like I explained to Jeff, this movie was ordained before I was even in the womb. Mm -hmm. It was. And that the people that don't understand, I say that they don't understand it. It's because the you know the Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. 
because they don't study. And mm -hmm. I did. I studied. And I studied and I know the word of God. Now, even though I'm not saying I'm a Christian saint, no. I, I thank God I'm saved by grace, right? Thank God mm -hmm. I'm saved by grace. And uh, if it wasn't for that, I'd be in a lot of trouble. But <laughs> Jeff, he wouldn't have a chance. So. <laughs> Could you feel, uh, clearly, I mean, I do a lot of these interviews and it's really great to be speaking to two people who are so passionate about their faith and so open about it. There's no double speak. It's just, we're all straightforwardly able to center this conversation around Christ, which I know for people in your positions and someone in my position, that's just total gift, right? And just, um, I don't know, it's soothing. It's wonderful. Could you really feel the presence of Christ and the spirit on set and in the production that you were making? Were there opportunities for prayer? Like, how did you get to live your faith in the production? Well, we did pray. We did pray every day yeah. on set. Um, I made everybody stand around and pray. A lot of the crew were like, uh, you know, mumbling or grumbling. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry. You'll live through it. Yeah. <laughs> and um, things like that, um, things like that happen, you know, a lot through the movie. I mean, this movie... Like I said, the, the investors didn't get in my way and come bother me. They let me make the movie I wanted. It, it was a huge movie for the budget we had. We had a pretty decent budget. It wasn't like, you know, no money, but it was not of the level of a studio picture with like $15 million. It just wasn't. Mm -hmm. So we had a struggle in the sense that movies are dictated by days mm -hmm. and they're dictated by page count. So say Steven Spielberg movie, Steven will get one day to shoot one page. Mm -hmm. On my movie, I get one day to shoot six pages. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of moving really fast. You don't have a lot of time to slow down. But some days, I mean, I was always in a good mood. I was always happy. Um, I never felt any stress or struggle through the whole film. So I think that's part of it that I felt like I was taken care of the whole time. And that this was going to be something special, especially with things that would happen on set. Mm -hmm. when the actors would perform little Ricky, the little boy that plays the lead, he's never done a movie. That's incredible. And I, I had faith in him because he had a quality nobody else had, his innocence. He wasn't a Hollywood actor. He didn't bring all that baggage with him. You know, Hollywood's a mess right now and all the, the parents, the morals they teach their kids and it's just another world. And this kid was pure from a really good family out of Long Beach, California. And his dad was a film director and a TV director. So that's what sold me. I asked, I put his dad to the test. I said, you're going to have to tell me right now that this little boy can carry 50 pages of my movie, 50 minutes, because the audience has got to fall in love with him. He can't be amateur and you have to bring him ready. And he did. And that little boy, I just felt was like a gift to me. You know, he, he never, I never had to correct him on a line. I never had to, he was perfect. Every kid, every actor in this movie was flawless. And the whole movie just came together like like a beautiful, beautiful song. He just you told know? me some he just told me something that I didn't even know. Uh that little boy. I'm telling you, that kid is a superstar. He really is. It was God sent that we got that little boy. Oh yeah. I don't even know. I have never, I mean, this kid re could remember everything, anything you said. Whatever, um, I went outside through the football with him, and uh, I just couldn't believe this kid, uh, the most amazing kid. And I was going, you know what? He's me. He was me growing up. No wonder it made it so simple for him. He's just being himself. He just was perfect. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. I yeah. haven't. He never complained about anything. He never he never had a problem. And then every now and then, the only thing he complained about in the whole movie, it came out of nowhere and we would laugh. And so I was talking to a makeup girl one day. And she says, you know, Jesse Barry, who plays little Ricky, you know, he he's named his leg braces. <laughs> I said, what? He says, he hates them. And you can imagine what Ricky really went through. And I said, what did he name them? And she said, are you ready? Lucifer and Satan. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the left one was Lucifer and the right one was Satan. That's so funny you said that. I, I laughed so hard. I said, I, 
And so I'd say, hey, I'd say, Jesse, go get in your braces. We got to shoot. He'd go, uh, I have to put Lucifer and Satan on. I go, now. Yep. That's Ricky, so did you name yours as well? I named mine as well. <laughs> I sure did. Uh, my dad wound up making my last three pair of braces. Uh, he made them. Um, that was incredible. Yeah, too, because uh, we couldn't afford it, and but he made them. And uh, uh, but saying that, uh, this this kid here, you said his name Jesse, right? Jesse. Jesse Barry. Yeah, he is. He's phenomenal. I mean, it. I can't begin to tell you. You talking about God sent? I mean, it was like for Jeff for to sit here and tell me now that this this kid's never done a movie. Um, it's mind blowing. I mean, this kid could act. This kid could act as as good as anybody out there on that set. He's that he's that good. If when not, it's God given, it's God given. That's right. Oh, let, me, let me tell you, if not if not even better. I've never I've never seen a kid. He's the one that floored me the most. He really was. Just well, that scene in the church where he comes in and talks to his father <laughs> that he chooses both. That's pretty powerful. I have no idea how he understood that scene so well. I do not know. And he, and he walked out of that church after that scene, and he started playing, slapping the little girl, plays his sister, and running around. It was like he just knew what to do and then became a kid after that. By the way, that little boy, Jesse, is now probably eight inches taller than he was. He's, he's not even <laughs> a boy anymore. He's like almost a man. Oh and um, I talked to him on the phone recently, and I was like, what, what happened to Jesse? because <laughs> you know, I, I grew seven inches in one year in my when I was in fifth grade to sixth grade that's so, painful <laughs> yeah, it hurt it hurt he wasn't that tall on the set with us he's gotten tall now um in my research am I right in seeing that you share a writer in this movie with Rudy uh the writer of the movie is the guy who wrote Rudy and Hoosiers Angelo Pizzo that was something I wanted. I wanted to get the best crew I could. And he was my number one choice. And just by coincidence, a friend of mine was best friends with him and he owed him a favor. So he said, I can get to him because he owes me the favor, but he's going to have to love the script. So he loved the first script. And then he immediately said, I want to do this and I'll do it for a fraction of what I normally get because I believe in it. And so he got involved and then we got Scott Marshall Smith to work on the faith aspect of the movie a little heavier because he comes from that background. Mm -hmm. And he wrote, he wrote Men of, Men of Honor with uh, Robert De Niro and, and the Cuba Gooding Jr. And he also wrote When the Game Stands Tall with Jim Caviezel, which was also a faith movie mm -hmm. um, that Sonia Firm put out. And um, those two guys were the best team you could ever have on a movie. I mean, Angela wrote the majority of the movie and then Scott added the faith element in the film more you know. just blessings on blessings all of these Constantly. really what i feel comfortable calling miracles like when god pulls it together like this well it's still happening every single day i mean the, the actor strike comes right so they tell me you don't have actors to do press you have to do press with ricky i'm like that's fine and they we taped all the actors so their stuff's going to come out and we have behind the scenes with dennis but the but the worry the, the worst thing for me was the date it was coming out because there are four or five six movies coming out with it nothing no Marvel movies but Dirty Dancing two was supposed to come out and that could have drawn an audience mm -hmm. and so suddenly they all disappeared miraculously they all disappeared because of the strike they didn't have actors to do press so they didn't want to continue on their release date. So we have no competition but two little movies that don't even compare to ours. Not that I've seen them, but I just, the subject matter is not mm -hmm. something that the families want to go see. Mm -hmm. And this is a movie that everybody can go see and walk out of and be, you know, completely, you know, full of promise and hope and inspiration and smile and happy and go to dinner afterward and talk about the movie. I mean, we just interviewed with somebody today that said her whole family watched it last night. And the little boy went out back and started playing baseball after, and they wanted to meet Ricky on the, on the, on the interview. And she said, we sat and talked about values and morals and, and what this movie did to them because they all were inspired by this movie, all their kids. So that happens to us every day. These miracles keep happening. And, um, you know, I'm always on a little, I'm always positive, but I'm always, you know, I'm nervous. I'm nervous, but I don't have any reason to be. 
Well, let's get into that right. for my audience because I'm sure they've listened to our conversation and they're like, okay, yes, I have to see this movie. So my questions always that I end these interviews with is who should see your film and how can they see it? When can they see it? And so I just really want to make it so easy for them to know how to plan family night. Okay. Well, that's exactly what this movie is, a family movie in every way. It has conflict in the sense that you don't want to be bored. It's not some Hallmark mm -hmm. movie, but it doesn't have one bad word, one bad moment, nothing that they would ever not want their kids to be a part of. It is a lovely movie in the vein of Seabiscuit and movies mm -hmm. like that. You know, Seabiscuit was about a horse who did the impossible, who who had this incredible will and and um, all the people around him. And this movie is the same. And... Um, I want everybody to go see this. I, I made this movie for two-year-olds on up to 90-year-olds. And we've <laughs> experienced that that has worked. People love it in every every age group. And they can see it on August 25th all across the country. It's playing in, in on 1,500 screens or more. So um, the posters are up in the theaters now. They cool. can go to thehillmovemov.com, which is the website, T-H-E-H-I-L-L mov.com or they can go to the hill move on instagram and uh, i think it's also on facebook and they can, just, they can just google the hill and they'll, they'll be able to buy tickets within the next week i think but they should get up early because i think it's going to be something we're not expecting because people are calling in and wanting to see this movie and um it's going to be crazy that is so awesome. Do you guys want to, we'll wrap up now, but does anyone want to close us out in prayer? I don't mind doing it, but if anyone else wanted to. Sure. Yeah. You want me to lead it? I can lead it. I don't Great. mind. It's a gratitude prayer on my part. So Lord, I just want to thank you for Jeff and Ricky and their whole team for Ricky's courage and faithfulness as he lived this story, because this is more than just a story we're going to see on our screen. So thank you for all of his perseverance and everything that he did throughout his whole life, ordained by you, anointed by you, to create the life story that is going to reach so many families and so many kids in a time when they need it most. I want to thank you for inspiring Jeff to create art and entertainment that is good and true and beautiful in a time when the world and this industry needs it most. And I want you to please bless all of the people who are going to come and see this film and all the conversations that they are going to have and all the good that's going to come for it. And above all, I just want to thank you in your name. Amen. Amen.